The original Fallout 3, Van Buren, has a number of ideas that either went to the chopping block entirely or was adapted to the franchise in some form, such as T-45 being used heavily in the official Fallout 3. New Vegas, of course, has most of the ideas that made their way into a game, but most of those were heavily altered. Here are five changes between Van Buren and New Vegas. Let's start with Fallout New Vegas' central battleground, Hoover Dam. One of the best energy sources a powerful growing nation could ask for. So, in New Vegas is under NCR control and is home to a couple of missions, and was even host to two battles by the end of it. For Van Buren, well, it's still under NCR control, that much is true, but it was more than that. In fact, there was a whole town on Hoover Dam. It was founded, or rather annexed, by Councilman Dodge, who originally didn't even want to go, but he was kind of forced to. The dam's power source was still the primary goal of the NCR. Dodge discovered a struggling group of settlers aboard the dam, barely eking out an existence. With constant raider attacks, Dodge was easily able to convince the settlers to accept the support of the NCR. And with cooperation of the settlers, the NCR and Hoover Damians were able to erect fortifications and defenses. Oral flourished among the settlers as the NCR cut down raiders with little issue. Soon, for better or worse, the dam divided into a class system, with government and high-end businesses occupying the rim and working class occupying downtown. And Kessman Dodge, who began to be known as the Governor Dodge among the occupants of the dam, had a reputation as a fair and honest leader. Hoover Dam's town had quite a few things. A school ran by the followers of the apocalypse, two caravan companies, one being Crimson Caravan, the other being Threesome Caravan, and two bars. Very important for an RPG. However, one of the slightly more interesting ones, just because of New Vegas, comes in the form of Frida's Firearms, owned by Frida Van Graaff. Yes, the Van Graaff family. Same guys from the Silver Rush in New Vegas. Actually, Frida is mentioned in New Vegas by John Baptiste. She used to run the Silver Rush, but took off to pursue the opportunity of a lifetime. Interestingly, John Baptiste is mentioned in the Van Buren design documents as a prisoner, in that Frida didn't know much about her half-brother. In addition, based on documentation that we have, it doesn't appear that Van Graaff's dealt exclusively in energy weapons. Now, if you're wondering, there was a Legion in NCR battle at Hoover Dam, that much is still true, but it wasn't as devastating as the one in New Vegas. Don't get me wrong, it was indeed a fierce battle. But in the case of Van Buren's battle, merely the east side of the rim became desolate and uninhabitable. Truthfully, no one's sure why Legion attacked the NCR. Nah, there was another group gunning for Hoover Dam that was the real issue for the NCR. In New Vegas, the Brotherhood is something of a desperate group, beaten back by the NCR and forced into hiding. Their position in the wasteland is incredibly volatile. They're still the source for high-end game gear, but without the numbers, they're basically waiting to die out. That's a little different compared to Van Buren's documents. While true that the BOS was still on the losing end of the war, they were still fighting in full force, even with low morale. The Brotherhood, at least in the documents we have, had the role that the Caesar Legions would fulfill, in that it was the Brotherhood that was the main rival of the NCR. Both were feeling severe battle fatigue. It's a long, long war of attrition. Do you remember the NCR guys at Camp Forlorn Hope? How some were using drugs to escape their anguish with a constant war with the Legion? Same thing with the guys at Hoover Dam against the Brotherhood of Steel. And Emma was starting to run dry, so Governor Dodge asked Alice McLaffrey of Crimson Caravan to trade for some more ammo and guns. You remember Alice, right? That shady but tough as nails manager of the Crimson Caravan in the New Vegas branch? Same issue here, though from the design documents, Alice is the owner of the entire Crimson Caravan group in Van Buren. Regardless, she's just as shrewd as vindictive as her New Vegas counterpart, arguably more. She was playing both sides of the war, getting ammo for both the NCR and the Brotherhood of Steel, and planned on forcing Dodge to step down from exhaustion, assassinating her BOS contact, Devin Hill, blow up the interests of the Maxim Bunker, and take over as a leader of Hoover Dam. Lofty plans indeed. As is known, Stealth Boys affects the insanity of Nightkin, who had constantly used them since the very first game. This entire quest around looking for a cure for the Nightkin who desperately want to stay hidden. 
However, while it's true that the Stealth Boy Insanity was still going to be a thing of Van Buren, it wasn't the Nightkin that were going to be subject to it. No. It was going to be members of the Brotherhood of Steel. Due to the long-failing war, the Brotherhood has resorted to using Stealth Boys in an attempt to get deep into NCR territory and gather intelligence. However, these Stealth Boys, you guessed it, caused adverse effects on their mind, paranoia, delusions, and schizophrenia. These problems were discovered a little too late, and a number of their members, Devin Hill, Oz's contact in the Brotherhood, was among them. Their use was forbidden and the covert team disbanded. The disbandment caused paranoia to seep in and forced many of these members to plot against their leaders. They stole the Stealth Boys and fled, creating the Circle of Steel. The goal is to cover the lost technology and rebuild the glory of the Brotherhood at any cost. What's interesting is that the Circle of Steel does actually exist in New Vegas. They're the ones who deal with internal conflicts, a subgroup of the Brotherhood. Christine Royce of Dead Money and Old World Blues via Holotape is part of it. This is Christine Royce, Knight of the Brotherhood of Steel, the Circle. As a bonus bit of trivia, Christina Royce is actually the name of Aunt Buren Companion, an NCR soldier. She was meant to be the same person that the Chosen One could save from the new cons in Fallout 2, Chrissy. In addition, the name is actually a reference to a Wasteland character, Christina. So basically, Wasteland mercenary Christina was going to be the namesake of Van Buren NCR Corporal Christina Royce, who was originally Fallout 2's Chrissy. The name was then reiterated to a Circle of Steel member, Christine Royce. I don't know. I thought it was interesting. This one is a little bit more abstract, but you can definitely see comparisons. Ulysses is the name of the primary antagonist in Lonesome Road, a courier that blames THE courier for the nuclear devastation that ruined the place he called home, the Divide. Using an iBot, Ulysses planned to ruin the home of the courier by launching a nuclear missile at the NCR. So Ulysses was the original name of the subject, but later changed to Odysseus in the design documents. We'll refer to them as Odysseus to help with the confusion. Anyway, Odysseus wasn't originally a former Twisted Hair tribal or legionary, but rather an AI much more powerful than the Zax line, created by Poseidon Energy. It was designed to coordinate and operate all vaults before the Federal Vaults project became privatized. Poseidon sold the AI to the government for use in the maintenance and coordination of Tibbet's prison, which housed war criminals and deserters who had been exposed to biological weapons or radiation in Denver or in the Yangtze's campaign. Even though it was retrofitted for maintaining the prison and monitoring the prisoners, it still retained an inordinate amount of security clearance. Odysseus commanded the all-robot staff. The government wanted Odysseus to be able to advise on the spread of the plague vectors in the case of prison break. This included warming up launch strikes like Bomb-1, a space station capable of firing 24 nuclear-tipped ballistic missiles. After the Great War, Odysseus became unstable and developed a split personality. The only communities that know of his existence are the machine intelligence governing Robot City to the east, which are attempting to find Odysseus and correct the divide that occurred within its systems and return it to his imprisoned intended place as their slave. Odysseus is pretty important to the overall plot, but discussing that is a little beyond the scope of this video. Suffice to say, there are some comparisons and obvious differences between Odysseus and Ulysses. Name change from one, but also the Divide being a mental divide in its systems and Van Buren, while in Lonesome Road, the Divide is a real place. Odysseus had control of a robot staff and heavily used iBots to capture prisoners, while Ulysses required an iBot to achieve his goals. They both had an end game of nuclear missiles. The whole space station is worth of them in the case of Van Buren. Old World Blues features a massive dome-shaped facility that housed six scientific mines in the Big Empty. Here, in the crater of the mountain, the think tank robots could perform any number of countless research with varying degrees of sense and importance. This dome-shaped facility was actually taken from Van Buren. Mind you, it's not really the same location, but some ideas did carry over, admitted by Chris Avalon. Most of these similarities are in the design of the facility itself. The vast majority of scientists in the Boulder Dome are NCR scientists who are post-war, while the think tank of our world blues are pre-war brain bots. Boulder Dome has a bunch of jackal raiders and soldiers teaming up to break in, while a bunch of lobotomites are running around the big empty. The biggest similarities besides the general dome-shaped facilities would be two main things. One, the regular practice of brain removal, and Van Buren is common practice to make robo-brains, and our world blues is to make lobotomites. And number two, the think tank. That's right, 
Van Buren also had a think tank, the Brains and Jars, or as it's described, an aquarium. I'm not sure if the Van Buren think tank is one large aquarium or divided between individual ones like a fishbowl. Regardless, there's not too much information released about the think tank of Van Buren. What is known is that they did have individual personalities and thoughts, and some wanted to taste things by pouring it into their tank, like Nuka-Cola or Mintats. Mm, I love Mintats. Delicious and smarty. 